Hey Robot Makers, do you want to make your own Guitar Hero game using a Pimeroni Galactic Unicorn and some MicroPython? Then this is the show for you. So let's dive straight in. My name's Kevin, come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. Okay, let's get over to our keynote. I've got, so I've got too much stuff on my desk, that's why I accidentally hit the button. Let me just move some of this out of the way. Hey Hal, how's it going? Cool, right, let me just uh, organize my screen a little bit there. Oh, great, okay, so this is all about the uh, Galactic Unicorn. I've just turned my reminders off, why is it, what? feed the geckos. That's an important reminder right there, isn't it? Let me just make sure we are on uh, do not disturb <laughs> and then we can get back to it. God, it's not going very well so far, is it? Right, so the session goals for today is we are going to make a Guitar Hero-like game using a Pimroni Galactic Unicorn. We're going to have a quick look at some of the Galactic Unicorn features, just in case you haven't heard of one of these already. Uh, we're going to have a look at um, what the GPIO pins are, because we're going to use some of those to get some of the buttons. And we're going to have a look at how the gameplay actually itself works so we can create a game using the uh, the display. We're going to have a look at uh, Pico graphics briefly as well, just so that we can... Uh, switch some pixels on and off and uh, we're going to then dive into some of the code and have a demo and if you're watching on uh, live uh, we'll have a mailbox i've got so much stuff to share with you hence why i hit the wrong button just then and um yeah i basically just want to share that with you and we'll have a q a as well um so yeah hell's just said on there as well people who are trying to get hold of uh, galactic unicorns hopefully there'll be some um next week they're just waiting on the the little legs to arrive i'll show you what they are actually so these are these little leg things which screw onto the um screw onto the bottom of the galactic unicorn and just let it sort of stand up and um i think there's uh, just a bit of a delay in getting all of those that's my understanding cool so let's get over to the uh, the next slide let me just get over to that there we go so let's have a look at some of the features so we use. so this is a perfect sign for, for, for YouTubers. I've got four of them in the studio right now. Um, it's based on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. So there's a Pico W on board on the back. It has 583 RGB LEDs uh, in a 53 by 11 pixel grid. And it just happens that that 53 by 11 pixel grid is so useful. There's so many different things you can do with it. There are 52 weeks in the year, for example. Um, 11 pixels deep is quite a lot. You can do quite a lot with different types of fonts with that as well. So it's really quite a rich display and it's, oh my goodness, is this bright. So when you've got the pixels on full brightness, you can illuminate a room with this. I've seen people use these um, as, you know, behind the TV illuminators, you know, hook them in with the HDMI, that kind of thing to, uh, to have the... Uh, displays change at the same time. Uh, some other things that it has, so it's got 3.5 millimeter LEDs with rounded square apertures. So you get this nice um, diffused look to them without any additional material on top. They are spaced six millimeters apart, which means you get this uh, really nice um, big screen and uh, you know, you can do quite a lot with that. And they are driven by this uh, FM6047 constant current LED driver board. Um, there's 10 of them on board, actually, just to uh, just to provide enough power and to uh, control all the LEDs. And uh, there is also, which is quite cool, I'm looking at using this shortly. It has an uh, I to S mono amplifier and it also has a speaker built on the back as well. So this means that we can do things with sound. It actually has like a synthesizer uh, library that you can you can tune into and do some cool things with. So I'm looking at uh, doing something with that very shortly. Um, there is also a photo transistor for light sensing, so you can actually detect the light level, the ambient light level, to bring the, the brightness of the LEDs you know, to an appropriate level, depending on what your environment is at the moment. Um, there are nine tactile user buttons. We're going to be using five of them in our game uh, today. One for each of the, the threats on our, on our bass guitar, I'm assuming this would be. Um, there is a reset button, a captain reset, and there are two quest connectors, the quick Stemma QT uh, connectors on the back as well. There's also the JST PH for power, so if you've got a battery, you can plug this in and it'll run for a surprising amount of time, depending on the brightness uh, and the amount of activity going on on the board. Uh, it comes fully assembled, there's no soldering required, so um, very easy right out of the box, right out of the gate to, to set this up and have a play with it. So this is the business end. This is what it looks like. There is just a phenomenal number of LEDs on this. Um, so the four user buttons on the left hand side, you've got A, B, C, D. And on the right hand side, you've got the five um, user buttons as well. They've uh, got the 
The nomenclature there, they've got uh, Lux plus and minus, uh, Sleep and Volume plus and minus. But they're completely user programmable and that's what we're going to use today. We're going to use them at the bottom of our fret to, uh, to press uh, as they the uh, notes come down the screen uh, a couple of other things i just wanted to point out on here um, in this orientation which is like the the standard orientation for the board um, x and y start at the top left so that's where we're going to um, sort of write our pixels from if you like that's the coordinate system and yes there's 53 across by 11 down in a in a matrix so the back of it, look at that gorgeous um, unicorn artwork that Guru did, absolutely outstanding. You can see the Pico W on the right hand side there. Um, you can see the user buttons, the, the five that we're going to be using on the left hand side there, we just flipped it round. You can see the speaker, the battery connector, the two Quest connectors there, the reset button and the other four user buttons as well. So it's really quite a, a fully packed board this one. Okay, so the gameplay, how is this actually going to work? So the notes are going to fall down the guitar's neck towards the scoring line. So we've got a scoring line. Anything that goes beyond that, we want to make sure that the user presses, the, the player presses the correct button for that particular column as that, uh, that note falls into that sort of scoring zone. So if they press that, they get a score, they, get, um, they don't lose a life. Um, if they miss a note, um, then they will lose a life. So if they don't press it in time, they will lose a life. And we can define how many lives they've got and how many points they get, all that kind of stuff. So the game will stop when all the lives are lost. So that's the very simple gameplay. And uh, yeah, this is how we're going to do it. On the back, there is the five buttons. So there is seven, sorry, there is 11 pixels going across. So we can roughly split that into to five columns with the sort of spare column. We'll just ignore one of the columns for now. And that means that we can double the width um, and we can have like a line that's two pixels wide. And the scoring line, I've just arbitrarily decided that's like four rows up from the bottom of the display as it's look, as you sort of look at it stood up. Um, and yeah, anything that goes beyond that, that's gonna be our scoring zone, our scoring line. So the GPIO, there is a couple of um, switches, as we said on here, there's like nine user programmable switches um, and they have um, a constant name within the, um, the Galactic Unicorn uh, module, the library. So they're called things like switch underscore brightness underscore down. You've got switch brightness up, we've got switch for sleep, switch for volume down, switch for volume up. And in the game that we're going to play, we're going to basically just rename those just as button A, button B, button C, button D and button E for the different uh, frets that we're going to be representing. And on the left hand side there, these are the um, these constant values that you can see here. Um, they basically just um, represent one of those pins. So you don't have to remember it's pin 26 for button A, for example. Um, so there they all are. And we're not actually using button uh, switches A, B, C and D in in this particular game we could do we could have different um different different levels perhaps or like a reset for the game that kind of thing uh, but i've not actually used them for that it's quite a simple um quite a simple video <laughs> quite a simple game okay so um how do we actually store the note so i was thinking about this and i think very visually so i was thinking that probably the easiest way to do this is to have a tune uh, variable and we will just put in there either a tuple or a list. I think on this one it was a tuple just because it isn't going to change, so why not? And then each of the rows is just one of the rows of notes as it would as it would sort of fall down the screen. This is how it's going to look. So I just arbitrarily created this particular pattern there. It isn't any particular piece of music. Uh, and if you I suppose if you were to do this properly, um, you would figure out how many beats per second, how many beats per minute the music is that you're going to be playing. You would also match that with the speed that they fall at so that one note is on the correct number of beats per minute and that it would be synced up to some piece of music. So the Pico W isn't massively powerful. It's not very easy to uh, play a WAV file through it and do all this kind of processing as well. Not with uh, the standard MicroPython, um, but that's why I'm interested in learning a bit more about the I to S for audio, because perhaps we could do something with that. So the tune is stored in this tuple or this list. Each row represents one of the notes of the guitar neck five possible notes uh, that could be stored in that. One is a note, zero is no note, and the tune will scroll from the bottom first. It will sort of drop down as you see it here, which means if, if our sort of uh, display is here, uh, as it drops down, it'll, it'll draw the bottom ones first, if you like. Um, so we just need to make some code that will do that. 
There's a library called Pico Graphics that comes with um, the Galactic Unicorn sort of built into their firmware. And this makes it really easy to draw pixels and to work with graphics and images on the display. So there's only a couple of things that we need to know about to make this work with um, Pico Graphics. The first one is creating pens. So when we create a pen, we basically just give an RGB value, a red, green and blue value between the values of 0 and 255 for each of the three different colours. And they, when they merge together, that you'll get a single colour for that particular pixel. So what we need to do whenever we're drawing on the screen is set the pen um, to the colour that we want to draw. And then any drawing operations that we do, such as setting a pixel, will then take that colour that we've just set. So first of all, we have to create a pen with the colour that we want. And then we set the pen to be that pen that we've just created. So there's, you'll see these um, in the code in a minute. So once we've set the, the pen colour, we can then say pixel X and Y. And wherever it is on that particular display, the X and Y pixel will be withdrawn. It will draw those things, but it won't actually update the display right away. We'll have to uh, call a display.update and that will refresh the display with all the commands that we've just driven. And the reason for that is if you if you updated every single time you drew a pixel, for example, the, the, the display as well as being very slow, would you would see it flicker. Um, whereas when you just have one update display at the end of drawing, doing all your drawing operations, um, what you get is a really, really solid, smooth um, scrolling effect. So that's one of the things that we'll be doing um, in a minute on the, uh, the code. So how does it work? This is essentially the main game loop. It's very, very simple. Um, so we've got a variable that's called lives. While lives is greater than or equal to zero, um, we'll keep going around the loop. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do that thing I've just said about uh, setting pens. I'll I'll show you how we actually define all these colors like black and so on uh, in the code in a minute. But we essentially set the pen to be black. We clear the display, which basically just sets all the pixels to be what the current color is, which is black. So they all go off. And then we we call a function that I've created that's called draw board. So a draw board will draw that little scoring line in white across the bottom, and um, it will also draw wherever the current um, notes the, the current tune that's being played wherever that's up to it'll render that out as well um, next up we've got oh sorry that's the display tune tune and then x and y so displaying the board is just putting the line across the bottom and then displaying the tune will actually display the tune and render that out the x and y coordinates that we wish and essentially all we're going to do is just change the x coordinate because all that let me just get this uh, spare one i've got just here so normally you would have the uh, the galactic unicorn in this kind of orientation. So there's your sort of X coordinates and there your Y. But what we're doing is we're flipping this up this way round. So the um, the Y is now going across and the X's are sort of going down, starting at the top at zero and going all the way down to sort of 53. Um, it's 52 because it starts at zero, that kind of thing. But you get the idea. So we're just going to change the uh, the x coordinate uh, just because of the orientation that it's in. We're then going to check to see did we miss any um, any notes that went past the scoring zone without pressing any buttons, um, and if that's the case, then we will make that um, it's that way around. If we will make the scoring line turn red if we miss anything, so it'll interactively sort of flash red if you miss anything. It's quite a nice little thing, very very easy to do. And then we're going to say winning equals check the buttons. So if the buttons are being pressed and there is actually a note in that correct column, then um, then you'll you'll continue to win if you like. If you miss one, it will take away a life. So if we're not winning, one of the lives will be taken away. You can see their lives minus equals one. So we take a life away and then we print lost a life. Remaining lives is on whatever is in lives. So we can give ourselves a number of lives to, uh, to play with. Um, the next thing we do is we increment that X value so that um, if we're starting up here with our, our notes, it's going to draw on the very top one and then incrementing X will make it the next time it goes round, drop down the uh, the display. So quite a simple thing to do there. And then we're going to do the GU update display and that will render to the display all the different commands that we've just done, which will draw the pixels, make the notes the right color, all that kind of stuff. And it'll it'll appear there. The next one is the sleep function. So that's basically going to define the speed that this thing drops down at or very slowly. It's surprisingly hard to do um, to play the game and win uh, is what I've also discovered there. I think I made it a bit too complicated for myself. So if setting it to like one, one second, you'll basically just get the notes um, one second, one beat per second. 
um, which is probably not very realistic. So you probably want to tune that a little bit to, uh, to be whatever you wish it to be. And then the offset is basically, um, we are going to offset um, the X minus the length of the tune. So the tune is stored in these, um, um, as, as essentially just loads of rows that you've seen before. And whatever the length of that is, we want to, to grab that and then we want to, when we render it to actually start above the display so it's whatever the length of that, that that piece of music is in rows we want it to start above there and then drop down otherwise it'll just appear in full on the display and then drop so we want it to be sort of a minus value to begin with so the offset will just help us with that and if the offset is greater than the width minus four four is our scoring zone um then it will reset uh, x to be whatever x was previously which is the same kind of thing it's just that uh very the length of the uh, the notes above the the very top of the display we'll have a look at the full code in a minute uh, but this is the simple game loop so so just in summary there we're going to clear the display we're going to display the game board we're going to display the um, the tune at the current x position if the gear the if the player has missed any keys we will take one life away from the uh, for each miss well i say each miss if there are five notes dropping down it'll count that whole thing as just one miss. If we wanted to be really clever, we could count how many actual misses, but I haven't done that. I've just counted it as one row. Uh, we then increment the X position, update the display, sleep for an amount of time, and then loop again until no lives are left, until we've uh, we've ex you know we've extinguished all our lives. So that's the game loop, nice and simple. So if you like what I do and you want me to make more of these kinds of videos, make sure you give this video a like. Drop me a comment. Let me know if you're intending to get a Galactic Unicorn as well. I mean, why would you not? They're amazing. And um, also subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell and you'll also get notified whenever I go live with any new content. And I do go live every single Sunday at 7 o'clock GMT, unless I'm not very well, which is very rare. But uh, I, was not, I was not very well last week, so I was not able to, uh, to record anything. I did have some uh, shows in the bank, as it were, so I was able to sort of release one of those last Sunday. But I wasn't able to go live. I love going live. It's what I live for, so <laughs> really missed out. Okay, so... Here is how it works, if you like. We've got two bitmaps. So we've got the, the bitmap, which is actually just our tunes array, um, which has all the different notes that we want in there represented. And we have the Galactic Unicorns display as well. So like I said, normally in that orientation, um, we have zero being over here and our Y would be down, our X would be across, but we're, we're rotating this display like this. So our, um, our zero is at this top position here um, going th that way and going that way and that's what we can see on here and what we need to do is map each of those pixels across to our galactic unicorn display so we've got a loop to help us do that so it's kind of a loop of loops if you like so the first thing is we're going to say for each row in our bitmap that we want to display and interestingly we are going to start at the very top even though it's going to appear um, it's going to appear sort of bottom down as the thing drops down like that. Um, it's going to look like it's starting at the bottom, but we're actually going to render, or we're going to at least check to see, can we render um, a line at the very top? And it might be like minus 57, for example, up here. It might be right over off the display. Um, and we're basically going to say, is this within, is it greater than zero? If not, just skip it. And that means we can skip all the lines until we get down to a line we can actually render. Um, Interestingly, that can make the display sort of speed up and then slow down if you were doing like a lot of heavy lifting, but um, this is so lightweight, we, don't, we actually don't see that. So we're going to check for each row, um, and we can basically just say for, for um, you know, row in bitmap uh, in Python, so it's really nice and simple. We can then say for each pixel in that row, uh, and then we can say check if, if it's a 1 or if it's a 0. If it's a 1, we're going to draw depending on what that particular row's colour is. So we can store those colors in a little array and then we can just look up depending on which position it is like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we're actually going to draw two pixels on our display. So that's how we, we're going to do this. And um, yeah, we're going to stretch each pixel on the uh, Galactic Unicorn display and we're also going to set the color just depending on that position. So you can see there we've got um, 0 to 10 and then 0 down to 53, 52. Um, on the on the other side there so that's what it's like a very narrow space invaders it's surprisingly effective when this is going sort of full tilt um, if I just go over to here for a second uh, you can see that it looks pretty pretty quick 
and there's our little scoring line there and it's flashing as uh, as this comes down i've just currently turned off the uh, the piece of code that checks to see is there any uh, lives being taken away so that's what's going on there okay so let's have a demo let's have a play with this shall we um so i'm just going to go over to to thony oh the thing that was just going to display there. Let me just go back to that for a second. If you want to play along, you want to grab the code yourself, you can do. Just head over to github.com slash kevinmacalier slash galactic underscore hero. And you can grab the code. You can grab the tune that I made, which is just a sort of a zigzaggy pattern. Um, and you can play along. You can extend it and do what you like with it. Uh, and certainly extend it. This is a very simple game to begin with. Okay, so let me just go over to, to Thony. And let me um, share my screen. Okay. So let's go to the very top and see what's going on. There's only about 200 lines of code, almost 200 lines of code. So let's uh, let's just change that one back there so that we uh, we have our winning condition. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the Pico Graphics library from the Pico Graphics um, module. We're then going to bring in the Display Galactic Unicorn as display. So this is the uh, this represents all the dimensions and all the uh, behind the scenes stuff that needs to happen to make this display work. We're going to bring in time because we want to sleep that one time just uh, each between each rendering. Otherwise, it would just go really, really quickly. and You wouldn't see anything. And the other thing we're going to bring in is we're going to bring in um, Galactic Unicorn from the Galactic Library. And this will help us do a few things such as setting the buttons and also accessing which buttons we want to actually press. So that makes it very simple. So to set the display up, we're going to create an, a nice little um, variable that's called GU. So that stands for Galactic Unicorn. We're going to have a, a variable that's called display, which represents that Pico Graphics display that we've uh, just brought in here. And we're going to set the brightness to be um, half. So I can show you the difference. So currently, if I go over to here, the brightness is currently about half. If I change this um, over here, let me just bring this down. If I change that to one, we can see what it looks like at full brightness. Uh, so if I just run that now, so it's even brighter. If I have all these pixels on, it's ridiculous. It's sort of studio light kind of brightness, very, very bright. Um, so you can see it stopped there because um, it's just lost because um, we didn't press any of the buttons and therefore we lost our lives. So yes, that's uh, full brightness. I'm just going to change that down to say 2.5. We can run that again and see what that looks like. Um, so it's still quite bright at a quarter of the brightness. Um, surprising how much how bright these lights can actually go. OK, so let's go back to the sort of full screen of that. Um, so next up, we are going to uh, just get the width and the height of the display. So we already know that it's 53 by, by 11, but um, we just want to bring those in there. And then remember when I was saying about setting the, um, the pens, we want to create some pens using some colours. So I'm going to, to set here green, yellow, cyan, orange, black and white. So these represent each of the five threats, threats and uh, black and white as well. And you can see there, green is just zero red, 255, like full on green, and blue is zero. And Wayne's asking there, is this powered from USB? It is. It's surprising how much juice they've been able to get out of just standard USB. Um, so yes, it is just USB. Um, red, obviously full on red, no green or blue. Yellow is red and green. Cyan is green and blue. Orange is some red and half the green. And then black is obviously everything's off. White is everything is on. Okay, so next we've got a little, um, I, th I thought I would put this in a function just because I was creating so many pens. I thought it'd be just easier to do this. So I've created a function that's called create pen. You pass in the display because we need to use the display to create the pens. And you can pass in the color that you wish as well. And the colors are these variables that we've set up here. And then what that's going to return is a created pen using the RGB values that we've passed um, within those little um, uh, dictionaries there. OK, so for example, um, lowercase red, we can say create pen display and then uppercase red. And that that creates a pen ready for us to use later on. So we create all the pens that we need. And then the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted the, 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 the threats to be, I keep thinking it's threat and it's not, it's fret. I wanted the frets to be um, the standard kind of guitar hero kind of colours. And um, just because of the way that the screen's oriented, uh, you actually do these backwards. So red, green, yellow, cyan and orange. I think they're the sort of official colours. And they're just in a little uh, dictionary. So we can basically just look up position zero will be orange, position one will be cyan, position 
two will be yellow, three will be green, and four will be red. We then create some button states. So we want to have frets A through to E set as false to begin with because we're not pressing the buttons down. And we also want winning to be true. We want the state of the game to be true as we started off. And we're going to create the tune pattern. So we're going to import tune one um, from the tune file. So if I open up the tune file, I just get into the uh, correct library there. So this is called uh, Galactic Hero. Uh, so if I open up the, the tune file, let's just open this one up. You can see there, it's just a variable called tune. Um, I could have done this as a list, but I've done it as a, uh, a tuple just by using the brackets. And uh, this is each row represents just a single row as it's going to fall down our display. So you can make this as long as you like. Now, currently these, although these, these are ones and zeros, I'm actually storing this as a text string. I could store this as a byte array. Um, but I haven't done just because I thought it'd be just easier just to sort of show this and we've got, got tons of memory if you think um, You know each one of these is just one byte. So that's five bytes. We've probably got about what? 30 ish 31 Yeah, 31 times five. It's not a, a massive number of bytes We've got plenty to play with there. So we could we could create a few different tunes if we wanted to of different lengths um, But that's how we store it. So we're basically just going to import that uh, in in here um, just as tune one uh, sorry as tune from tune one and then what we're then going to do is we're going to say um, because of the way that the display is oriented so normally we have the display in this orientation and we're going to we're going to turn it that way around so if I draw a bitmap I want the bitmap to be the correct orientation so I just need a little transpo transposition um, piece of code and this I think this is an ugly piece of code it uses list comprehension um, so it's very Pythonic uh, and essentially what this does is just rotates one orientation to be another like it rotates it 90 degrees and then returns the uh, transpose bitmap and what was interesting is how I went about finding this so I'm just going to take the, a bit of a tangent for one second because I want to show you this because it's so cool um, so let me load up here and let's uh, come down here. Let me just grab the piece of text and let me show you what I did. Right. So you might have heard of OpenAI, which is a Google project. And you can type in pieces of text such as, oops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted that piece of text just there. Let me just grab that. So what I'm typing in is Python program transpose a list of five character strings. So if I ask it to do that, it will say to transpose our strings in Python, you need a list comprehension. This will allow you to create a new list of strings with each of the original strings with a character in the different order. Here is an example of how you can do this. So this piece of code here that it's created, that transposition string there, that's what is in the code that we've just created. And it's created by machine learning. So you can type in anything in here. So if you said, um, you know, write me a Python program um, to um, to make cheer lights work, it will then go away and it will try and figure that out. It doesn't actually know what um, cheer lights are in this particular case. Oh, it's having a go though. What's it going to do there? Oh, look at that. It's found a Python cheer lights program. <laughs> So you can ask anything in any in in English. You can ask it to create you um, um, what be really random. Um, uh, create me a song to the tune of Twelve Days of Christmas, but for evil robots. There we go. This is machine learning just making this up. <laughs> So this just blows my mind that it can do this kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> Swain says, will that get the attention of the police? So I did ask it some questions just to see what would happen. So if they come for me, you'll know why. I, was, I asked the question, how would you get rid of a dead body? Just to see what it would say. And it says, it is unethical to ask this question. Dead body should always be... Um, disposed of by two or more people uh, really weird I don't know where it's, got, where it's got this from but it's basically studied 
thousands, millions of pieces of text, including computer code. Um, there we go, on the 12th day of Christmas. <laughs> 12 robots marching, 11 servos whirring, 10 circuits frying, 9 evil chips, 8 sonic blasters, 7 flamethrowers, 6 energy shields, 5 heat-seeking missiles, 4 smashing fists, 3 metal legs, 2 lasers, and a cyborg that could kill. So yes, uh, chat GPT is uh, pretty amazing. Um, just wanted to sort of throw that in there because I did use it um, whilst I was creating this, uh, this program. So that piece of code there to transpose, that piece was generated by um, OpenGPT. So you can create yourself an account on that and uh, have a play with it. It's pretty cool. Um, cool. So that's um, that piece there. The next one is to display the tune. So this is probably the main piece of code. When I look at this, I think there's probably quite a few bad programming practices in here. But what I tend to do is... Um, I'll do the thing where I make it work, I make it right, and then I make it fast if I've got time. So making it work is just the first step of just hacking the code together to make it do the thing that you want it to do. Making it right would be the next step to say, this piece of code has too many responsibilities as a, as a function. Um, we should move the pieces out to the correct place. So as well as displaying the tune, it's also setting the button states as well, which is probably a no-go. We should just make it display the tune and that's it. It's just that when we set the pixels, it's actually a good place to do that because it's just easier because we're actually setting it in that piece of code. And we'll get to that in a second. So I'm bringing in frets A, B, C, D and E. So these are the buttons. So we're going to check the button states. We're going to set the row and the column offsets to be zero. So we're kind of just starting from scratch here. And then we're going to set all the states of the buttons again to be false. And then remember our piece of code before that we looked at, this is exactly how we do this. So for each row in the bitmap, the bitmap is our tune. So those five uh, ones and zeros on a row. Uh, we're going to set the row offset to be zero and the fret number to be zero. The fret numbers are the columns, if you like. And then for each pixel in that row, we're then going to do a few things. So we're going to check, first of all, is this within the screen bounds? So we've got our display and when we very first run our piece of code, it will actually be off the screen because we want it to drop down. But, but before we draw it, um, the very bottom piece on the top line there, there is going to be a time where it's actually off the screen. So we can say if the length of the row minus the row offset is less than the width. And remember, width is actually that way. So that's just something to bear in mind. Um, if that is uh, less than that, then we can carry on because it's within the screen bounds. If the length of the bitmap plus the column offset divided by two is less than height, uh, and height, remember, is that orientation or that way across in this orientation. Um, if, if, if it's still within the screen bounds, then we are going to drop into the next one, which is if pixel equals one, then we want to draw a pixel. We want to turn on um, two pixels, in fact, over here. So we're going to we're going to set the um, the co the color to be whatever the current um, column offset is, and we started at zero, um, and then we are going to say um, set the display color to be whichever color comes out there. So fret colors is that array, if you remember there, whoops, of all the different colors. So red, green, yellow, cyan, and orange. And we're basically just going to index. So the very first time we run this, our column offset is going to be zero. So we're going to get like the zero of color from that uh, array. We're going to set the color and then we're going to then set. Um, so if the X plus the offset equals 50, um, we're going to set the game state. So if the column um, plus this, if the Y plus the column offset is zero, then the fret E equals true. So what this means is when we get down here onto the, the display, Row 50, which is this fourth one up here, because it's 50, 51, 52, 53. Um, well, it's actually that one there, I guess. So, yeah, row 50. Um, if that has anything being illuminated on there, then we need to make sure that the corresponding buttons on the back are going to be pressed because this is our scoring zone. So if, if, um, if the offset is 0, 2, 4, 6 or 8, because we're going to count in blocks of 2, um, to represent each of the columns, then if that is true, we're going to set the, the fret to true. So that means that the, the button should be pressed, the corresponding button. So by making these frets true, um, we can check for that. Remember, we actually we actually reset all those frets up there. So this is what's going on here. 
Um, so, and we do it in reverse order. So, because of the way that the display works, so if I'm holding this the correct orientation, the very top one is zero. So when we hold it this way round, the rightmost one is now zero. And if we have our buttons as A, B, C, D, E, and E is the, the rightmost one, that's why we need to say fret E is the zeroth column. Does that make sense? <laughs> and then we're going to count two pixels in for the next one, which is fret D, which is going to be this, this uh, next column across. And then we're going to do four across, six across and eight across until we get to fret A, which is on the left hand side, which actually would be the bottom if we were looking at it. And that's why it's the uh, eighth, eighth and ninth pixels. So if that's the case, again, this is a little bit of bad logic because we've got an if statement with loads of code and then we have an else. And um, it's not always good to do that uh, just because it's not very easy to read. But this is this is just making it work for now. So if um, if the pixel isn't one, if it's nothing, then we make the, the display pen black and then we draw the pixel. So we now know what our X and Y offsets are and what our X and Y values are. And we basically just draw the pixel and then we draw the pixel offset plus one. So it makes it too wide on our display. We then increase the fret number. So if we start at fret number zero, we're gonna to go to fret number one. The row F offset is going to be the thing that drops it down and the column offset um, is gonna be um, also incremented as well. So there's quite a lot going on there. The display board is a nice easy one. This one basically just draws a little white line um, on row 50. So it just comes across to here, draws a nice white line across. Um, and then it updates the display. Again, we could actually change that so it doesn't flicker as much, but um, I put it in there, it's fine. And then I created this other thing, a fret debug. I wanted to make sure that my button states and my fret states worked properly. So I've got this uh, piece of code that I can, I can use if I want to. And at the very top of the display over here, it'll make the first five pixels down um, display in yellow if they are enabled so there's one for each of the different frets so if they're if they're true because something has dropped down and has gone past the scoring line um, the fret should be true and therefore we can set it to yellow so uh, that's what they're for the next one which is check the button states so we start with saying win equals true and button a is going to be the galactic unicorn switch brightness button up button down so b is going to be button up and that's because the the, uh, the the actual names of the buttons which are on here correspond to the, to the frets that we're interested in so this is how we're going to basically just map our buttons to the buttons that are on the the unicorn display and then we're going to create a little thing that's called tests and we're going to basically put in there fret a and button a fret b button b and so on so little key value pairs excuse me in a list and then for fret and button in test the items we're going to say if the fret is true and if the button is pressed, then we're winning. Otherwise, win equals false and we're losing and we break out of there. So and then we return the winning condition. So if win is true, we're all good. If win is false, we're probably going to lose a life. So that is how we check the buttons. And then we check if we've missed just by saying if fret A, fret B, fret C, fret D or fret E, um, if they were true, then display set pen red and draw a rectangle, which basically just makes that, that line, our scoring line just turn red. Um, so if, if they are true, then we make the, uh, the, the bar red, otherwise we make it um, false because uh, they weren't passing it. Okay, so then we're getting to the sort of main bit of code just before the game loop. So we're going to bring in that tune. We're going to transpose it. So tune equals transpose tune. And it basically just changes it from an orientation, which is like that, and makes it actually work on the display because the display is really in that orientation. We're just holding it that way around. That makes sense. So we want our, our, our code, which we've drawn in five pixels by however many down, we actually want to rotate that round so that it works on this display, which is 53 by 11. Okay, so then we're gonna set the X reset, which is the length of that tune that we've just brought in. We're only gonna look at one um, row of it because we'll have to look, the, the row, the column widths are all the same. So we only have to look at one of them. So we're gonna look at the first one and then we can basically just times it by two because we're gonna stretch it out by two pixels, if you like. So it starts up being five or it's gonna draw it as 10. 
and um, because of the way orientation that it is, um, we 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 basically just uh, we've, we've rotated it there. That's fine. And by saying minus there, it means that when we draw it, it's going to just draw it off the top of the display and then bring it down. And then we basically just say x is the value of the x reset and y equals zero. So x and y, we're going to start with our top right pixel. Winning is going to be true. We can give ourselves three lives is probably more realistic, but I made it 30 in here just because I wanted to uh, give myself a chance at at least trying a few things out. And we're going to print out Galactic Hero. And then we're going to do the main game loop, which we've already looked at. So that's exactly the same as what we looked at before. So without further ado, let's have a play with this, shall we? So I'm just going to go over here. Um, I'm going to hold the buttons here. I've got a few of them in my hand. I can't hold all of them, but I can cheat. The, there is a cheat for this game, which is to hold all the buttons down. And it will, it will assume that because the things have passed through the scoring zone, that you had the button pressed down. So I'm actually not looking to see... Um, is that button only being pressed down when it should be pressed down and not when it isn't. So that's a bit of a cheat there. We can do that. So I'm going to press play and you can see there that they're going down. And because I'm holding all the buttons down, it's just going round and round and round. If I now let go, you'll see there that I'll lose all the lives and uh, I've lost and the game has stopped. So let's slow it down a little bit so we can see what's going on. Let's make it do it. Um, Let's make it do it half a second and then let's play. So we can see here, there's the uh, the first couple of notes. I've purposely spaced them out a little bit as well, just to make it a bit easier to, uh, to play. If they were all right next to each other, honestly, it's almost impossible to play. And you can see there that the fret colors are being brought in. So the, the, the fret on the very left is red. We've got green, yellow, cyan and orange. The orange and the yellow look quite similar. I think on this camera, the green and the uh, the blue also look quite similar, but you can see there what's going on. And then as they hit the scoring line, you can see that that's sort of flashing between white and red as we've uh, as, the, as they pass through the scoring zone. And you can see that the lives are being decremented there as well uh, because we're actually not pressing any of the correct buttons. If I attempt to try and press the right button, you can see there that the lives are not being lost. Oops, this one's a bit harder to do. And then there we go. So we didn't lose any lives that time. And if we speed this up now, if I do it as a 0.1, that's quite a bit faster. And then look at that. I'm not pressing any buttons down. And you can just see we're going to basically get through our lives and then we're dead. There we go. You lost. So a couple of things I could probably improve. I've currently got on the code... I just move that down there. Lives greater than equal to zero. Maybe I should have that as um, greater than equal to one rather than zero, and that would stop that uh, minus one. So let's just run that. And you'll see there, as we lose our lives, it should stop at zero. There we go, zero, and then you've lost. And we can change the, uh, the variable there so it's got three lives instead of 30 this will be a really quick game this one if i just run this now because it'll be the first three notes boom we're dead <laughs> so you can configure this however you like but conceptually very very simple very very simple do you like the uh, the guitar uh, i made out of uh, cardboard as well i was going to 3d print some bits to uh, to attach all this but i basically just ran out of time just creating the code um but yeah that's um that's how the game works so let's get back over to our Oops, here we go. So yes, if you're not joining our Discord server, head over to kevsrobot.com slash Discord and you can uh, join in the conversation. We can go a bit deeper there. Um, we're not like massively chatty on that channel, but um, th there is a vibrant community there. There are people who speak to each other. Laurie always welcomes people in, which is as nice as well as people join. And uh, there's been quite a few people asking various different questions. So one of the suggestions Laurie said this week was to have a mailbag. And I've got so much stuff, it makes sense to do that. So you can suggest things that will be in the show just by going to our Discord server. If you want to follow me on social media, uh, I do do quite a lot of social media so i'm on uh, tiktok i've had quite a few really successful like ridiculously successful videos on there one has got over three hundred and thirty thousand views which is just nuts um there is uh, another one that's just got i think over a hundred thousand now um so yeah pretty impressed that that, that that can happen so that's on tiktok so that's kevin mcleer six i'm on instagram as well kevin mcleer i'm on twitter um still on twitter at kevs mac 
and also on Mastodon at KevsMac at Mastodon Social as well. So uh, follow me on all those places if you want to. I'd really like to try and get the social media numbers up if I can as well. So if you're not following me on those, definitely uh, check those out and help me just by following me and that will help me get my message out further. Okay, so uh, if you want to help support the show, you can do that as well. Let me make sure I've got all the right uh, buttons switched on there for this now. Uh, I don't like to do them while we're um, doing the main content of the show. Uh, but yes, if you want to um, if you want to do a super thanks, you can do that just by going over to the, uh, the thanks button. Uh, if you you can do a super chat as well, which is um, it's got some bleep bleep noises. Then I think that must be uh, people following me on Mastodon. Uh, <laughs> I can hear it now. If you want to do a super chat, that's what you could do live. Super thanks are for people watching on replay, uh, and I really appreciate that. Quite a few people did that last week, particularly because I was off sick. So I really really appreciate that. And if you want to buy me a coffee, you can go over to Kevin Kevin'sRobots.com/coffee, and there's a nice easier link for you there. And you can also join the YouTube membership program. So they have a join button. Once you've subscribed, you'll see a join button. If you hit that, I think it's like the price of a coffee per month. Um, and again, that just helps support the show and um, keeps me in things like Galactic Unicorns and whatnot. Okay, so supporters. So this is a time for me to shout out to some of the supporters and get over to this side of the window here. Um, so we've got quite a few people now on the supporter side. We've got uh, uh, we've got Roland there. We have uh, Bill, Alex, Simon, uh, A. McIntyre, David. We have somebody who uh, bought me a coffee anonymously. Um, and we've got uh, Roland again there as well. Not sure why it's on there twice, but I think he must have given a coffee and also become a supporter, I guess. Um, we have, um, oh, you bought two coffees, that also means. We have uh, Keith, we have um, Shemi, we have Steve and Thomas, as well as members of, in the Buy Me A Coffee uh, membership. And then on YouTube, we've got, uh, we've got Hans, we've got Chair Lights, we have Michael, Fraser, Bill, um, Jose, uh, Jeff, Joan, John Paul and Tom, of course, as well. So if you want to get your names over in the credits, Yes, I did it. I did it right. It's <laughs> that side. If you want to get your name on the credits, go over to kezrobots.com slash credits and um, you can get your name up in lights. Cool. Okay. So let me just uh, go back over to there. Yes, that's it. So that's our, our keynotes all done. Good, good, good. And that means that's the end of this uh, this part of the show. So we'll, we'll move on to the live section of the show, which means if you're watching this on replay, this is a point where I'm going to cut the video and um, I'm going to I'm going to make this easy for myself now by going over to the live stream studio. I'm doing a little stream marker, which tells me um, um, I've got a stream marker and uh, <laughs> helps me basically cut the video where I need to cut it. So yes, if you're watching on um, live, you can carry on. We can have a Q&A. We can do our mailbag. If you're watching this on replay, I'll say thanks for watching and I shall see you next time.